Good evening and welcome to 60 and Beyond with Skylark this August 3rd, 2020. I do my vlog the first Monday of the month and I started it a few years ago for all you newcomers uh, because I was turning 60 and it was a different ball game. There were a lot of different emotions and body change, uh, physiologically, spiritually, you know, mind, body, soul. That's really what my vlog is about, keeping all of that in balance as we go into older age. And it's inspirational to thrive in older age because to me, you know, we're, we're evolving all the time. And just because we're getting older doesn't mean that we should stop pursuing uh, goals and and achieving our dreams because the truth is that those never stop. We always have dreams. We always have new goals. And sometimes it's hard to start them, but that's why I started my vlog, so I could help you, inspire you maybe to get started with something, you know, that you have always wanted to do, but haven't done. And um, I've started writing a memoir based on this vlog. Uh, the working title is 60 and Beyond with Skylark, an inspirational memoir from childhood to thriving in older age. I've started, got a few pages written already. Don't know when I'm gonna finish, have no idea. Because every day there's new stuff that comes to me that I wanna add. Uh, and basically, you know, I'm gonna do some research uh, on how trauma affects us in childhood versus uh, really good things. You know, what? what is the real effect? So that's where I'm at. I'm gonna start doing some research on that. Um, and d feel free to comment in the comment section here. And, you know, maybe share something that happened to you, whether it was a wonderful memory or a traumatic memory, and how it started to, now as you're over 60, if you are, because basically this vlog is, can be for any age, I think a mature age though, but it really is geared to the 60 and beyond crew. So um, share something with me if you feel inspired to that it shaped the way you uh, evolved or grew into adulthood. And maybe it's something that you're still dealing with. Maybe it's something that you want to start dealing with that you haven't. So before I get started, I want to wish Maria DeBello a very happy 60th birthday today. Welcome to the club. And Bonnie Fraser Metcalf um, is 60 <clears throat> and beyond. So uh, she doesn't always like to reveal her age, but you're in the crowd too. So happy birthday. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about going back to work because I'm going back to work this week, actually into my office. I've been working from home during this uh, social distancing, physical distancing, as I like to call it. And um, it's been okay, but you know, there are some things I just cannot do from home. I can monitor phones and email and work orders, but our work orders are sort of to hand out to the guys that I work with. So it'll be nice to get back into a working environment. But you know, I wouldn't be honest if I didn't say that I have a little bit of anxiety about it in terms of the mask and the mask wearing. You know, there's been so much controversy over it. I, don't really know why, um, for five months now. So let's see, March 16th was my first day out of work. And um, so that's about five months, right? April, May, June, July, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a long time. You know, it'll be almost two full seasons when I go back. So um, we have to wear a mask while we're at our desk. Uh, when we are in common area, we have to, uh, well, we, have, we can take it off when we're at our desk, but we have to wear it when we're walking through the office. And we're in a very busy office, so there's a lot of people coming in and out. But the campus is only going to be at 50%. So we will have a lot less people coming in and out, which is a good thing because that's, you know, less interaction, less chance of spreading um, COVID. Some people call it Rona. <laughs> Some people call it coronavirus. COVID. That's what it is, COVID-19. Um, so, you know, if you've started working, also share in the comments what it's been like for you. You know, has it been smooth sailing? Uh, is it uncomfortable wearing the mask? 
Do you sweat? You know, does it get kind of nasty under that mask? Like, what's going on? I want to hear from some of you that have been back sooner than me. Um, and also what that new culture might look like. So, you know, I, I have been off for so long and I've had time to nurture my garden, which has just been beautiful this year. Um, we went to the beach this afternoon uh, about five o'clock and, you know, you can tell there's a storm coming. The waves are, are big, the waters are rough. Um, this week there have been shark sightings and whale sightings. It's been one heck of a summer. <laughs> it's been a different summer. I haven't taken a, a real vacation, I haven't gone anywhere. Um, definitely took a couple of rides out east. I've yet to go to Montauk, so I'm gonna get that in. Um, went to New Jersey to see some friends over the weekend. That was really cool. Um, friends and family, and it was, it was really nice. So, but not doing too much this summer of that kind of interacting. So by now, you know, is this starting to feel like the new norm? I don't think so. I think that this is not as easy as our normal was. Uh, it doesn't feel as fluid though. Last month, excuse me, last month I talked about resilience and I think we've been incredibly resilient. I think that uh, it, it's amazing what we can get used to and and we've had no choice I mean we've we've had to adjust and I think overall we've done pretty well um, I feel like I've done fairly well uh, I miss the way things used to be I would be remiss if I didn't say that I really do I, I don't like feeling uncomfortable around people that I can't get too close so I pray for a time where we can go back to some normalcy they're making a lot of strides uh, trying to get a vaccine you know as soon as we can um, there's some good treatment you know the death rate is down boy it was it was absolutely frantic in April uh, and May and even early into June and I, I know some people that are nurses and work in hospitals and they were saying that it was just so unbelievable that you, you just couldn't believe how bad it really was um, so we've gotten through what, you know, hopefully will be the worst. I, I truly hope so. Uh, I pray all the time for our, our hospital workers and, you know, the frontline workers and all of us that have had to go back to work, that are now out of the safety of our homes, that are now going into office space where we are interacting more. And um, again, comment, let me know how that feels. Uh, you can send me a private email to christineskylark at aol.com. Let me know. Uh, you can PM me, you know, through Facebook, Christine Skylark. So, so many changes, you know, of course, the political climate and the elections and oh my goodness, I have really had to put that aside. Um, I've watched so much news, I've done so much reading and I decided that uh, I would step away from that, so I have. And you certainly can keep up. I mean, of course, when I get in bed at night, I always read something. Um, but I don't like the television bombarding me, and I like to get a, a sort of a well-rounded um, uh, viewpoint. You know, you can't only watch one side. You have to watch both. But there's so much pitting against one another that it's very hard to get any real feeling of truth. Um, Channel 13 has some great news. I listen to NPR. Uh, I read a bunch of different things. So I'm ready. You know, the next three months are going to be really intense with the election, with hopefully the, the violent outbreaks of protest, because I don't think there are any longer protests, will subside. Um, and people will get well, and people will come back to healing, and we'll get back to some change and you know it almost feels like as resilient as we are we don't want to get too comfortable with things being so awry you know not that we need to stay in a, um, a frantic mode you know or be too afraid but let's not forget 
all the suffering people that have really, really suffered through this time. Let's be mindful, let's send them love and prayers that they get through this. You know, I, I know it's a little sobering and I, hey, I get real, you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. There was another suicide by a police officer. Um, there's been tremendous upheaval in people's lives and let's not forget those that truly are suffering. Let's send abundant love out there, positive energy. Uh, you know, you can choose to hate someone or something that's never gonna serve you. That's really directed toward yourself, you know, when you hate something so much. So, so let's turn it into love. Don't you love yourself? Honor yourself? So let's turn it into love and share that love with everybody out there. Keep a great sense of humor. Um, oh my gosh, I don't think there's anything better than a really good laugh. And God knows, I, you know, if you know me, I'm like a goofball. I mean, I might not seem so here, but I, I can be very funny. <laughs> I even crack myself up sometimes. So keeping it light, keeping it real, keeping it filled with love, I think about all the people in the restaurant industries. They're the first ones. If you've watched my other vlogs, you know that they're the first ones that I, I thought of and I still, you know, Danny Meyer was on CBS uh, Sunday morning show a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about, um, and he's a big restaurateur, and he was talking about rethinking the restaurant industry and all these people that have just, they've lost their jobs. I mean, there, there are no other jobs for them because the restaurants were shut down and they have no insurance, most of them. They don't get paid time off. I mean, hopefully that industry is gonna be reconstructed and it'll be a really great industry to work in going forward. So there's a lot of really good that's gonna come out of this. I know it, you know, maybe the restaurant business will finally be up to, it's, it's one of the, the biggest employers in this country the, the restaurant business employs thousands and thousands of people. So thousands and thousands of people have been really affected by this pandemic. You know, and, and some of the looting and businesses that have been destroyed that are never gonna come back. So those people that have lost their jobs, you know. So let's remain cognizant of, of um, all the suffering that people are going through and then all the great stories that are coming out of it. Like, you know, reacquainting yourself with family in a different way, uh, cooking fabulous meals, listening to amazing music. I I've had the time to just, well, I love music and I always discover new music. I hope I can go back to my radio show, but um, it may be on a different night, so I will let you know, but we'll see. I'm not sure the radio is gonna be up and running on the campus when I go back. In the meantime, I post every now and then, I'll post a playlist on my Facebook page on Christine Skylark. And I have a page also called D uh, The Magic Hour with DJ Skylark. So uh, if you're not a friend of mine, you can send a friend request or you can like my page, The Magic Hour with DJ Skylark. Okay, that's my weekly Tuesday night radio show from five to six. But again, that may change. Right now we're not on air, um, so I'm just, putting up a playlist of some really cool stuff. And I just keep discovering new music. Um, and a recent one, uh, Marley, I forget his first name, it's Bob Marley's grandson with her uh, called Slow Down. Oh, slow down, let me love you. Slow down. Oh, it's such a cool jam. I love it. Um, the Real Thing, another song I discovered that Vanessa Williams recorded a few years ago, who I thought that was her song. Turns out Stevie Wonder wrote it, and it was written for Brazil 77. Oh, my God. You know, there's so much great stuff. As a matter of fact, tomorrow night, I'm going to post a playlist. Again, The Magic Hour with DJ Skylark is my page, or Christine Skylark if you want to friend me on Facebook. Um, and it's gonna be two for Tuesday and it's gonna be the same song by two different artists. Really cool stuff. And again, I'm always discovering new things. So.
So that's it. We're going to keep it short tonight. You know, it's kind of late posting this later than I usually do, but we were down on the beach where I love to be. So um, again, comment. Let me know what you're feeling about being back at work. Uh, maybe you're still working from home. Maybe you're going to continue to work from home. Let me know what that feels like. Uh, if I can help you in any way to um, embrace where you're at, send me a message. I'm always willing to talk and share what I've been doing to stay above board. And, you know, I've had good and bad days. I mean, there is no doubt. I just, I feel like I want to just bust out. But when I feel that way, I go to the beach. And being at the beach is the most wonderful place because we really are free. You look out at that incredible ocean and there's nothing limiting your thoughts and your spirit and your soul. It's just all free, right? It's the most wonderful place. So peace, love, I will see you in September. Can you imagine? <sighs> Time's going fast. Enjoy every moment. Stay in the moment, stay in the day, pray, meditate, be loving, be kind, be generous of spirit, be open-minded, stay positive, and I'll see you in September. Good night, everybody.